My name is Danny, and in case you're new, I am an ex-Jehovah's Witness, an ex-JW. Uh, I was born and raised into a household, a family of Jehovah's Witnesses. With that, I give my personal uh, lived perspective, including with family, that is still very much devoutly Jehovah's Witness. Just remember that everybody's experiences are, of course, unique, because we are all ind unique individual living beings, so naturally that and unique different circumstances and just the way everyone uniquely is is going to result naturally in different experiences and different interpretations and feelings and vibes and all that stuff so today i wanted to go back to where i started with jehovah's witness uh videos which by the way here is a playlist for you to fondle and to gander at if you ever want to see any or all of my content, I have done on Jehebi's Waiting Search. We are going to go back to what I did in that first video and actually review some videos, basically live react in a way. So, of course, this is courtesy of, as usual, my personal favorite and go-to source is uh, Lloyd Evans here. Cultivate humility. Jehovah cannot use us if we're not humble, and Jehovah's organization cannot use us. Imagine if you were building a kingdom hall and you ignored the direction of how to build it because we thought we knew better. You could have a lopsided kingdom hall. So when direction is given by Jehovah's organization, listen, accept it, and apply it. In the preaching activity, people are going to know if you are proud or humble. Humility is going to draw ones to Jehovah's organization, just like the smell of food draws us to a meal. And number five, cultivate modesty. So you're an example to others. We show we're modest when we do not demand our own rights. People can watch us and tell if we're modest by our actions and by our dress and groomings. So Stephen Bell here talking on the subject of humility and modesty. There were a couple of points I wanted to make. I'll start with the latter, where he talks there about modesty. I find it interesting how he talks about the need to not insist on one's rights. We show we're modest when we do not demand our own rights. So not demanding your own rights is a mark of modesty. It's something Jehovah's Witnesses should be aiming to do, not demand their own rights. Where does this place us when it comes to the right to report child abuse to the authorities would be my question. And I'm going to read to you from a document that you can actually still download from the JW.org website, Jehovah's Witnesses' scripturally based position on child protection. If you look at paragraph four in that document, it reads as follows. In all cases, victims and their parents have the right to report an accusation of child abuse to the authorities. Therefore, victims, their parents, or anyone else who reports such an accusation to the elders are clearly informed by the elders that they have the right to report the matter to the authorities. Elders do not criticize anyone who chooses to make such a report. I've been saying for way too long now that this provision doesn't go far enough precisely because of what Stephen Bell just said. Because in Jehovah's Witness culture, you're not supposed to demand your rights. You're not supposed to insist upon your rights. The key reason why, and I've, I've, I've said this many times, but the, the, the key reason why, the real reason why, and this is a great video for you to actually watch if you want to just understand how manipulation and abuse work. That video goes into it in depth. And Jehovah's Witnesses, as a cult, are all about power and control dynamics and keeping you in. It's heavy in manipulation. And when you first hear them, this is a 
uh, one of the lead elders, if not a governing body member, I believe it actually is that do these things, uh, is literally telling Je other Jehovah's Witnesses, the, the, their disciples, you, us, the world, technically, that you have basically, you, you should never acclaim to your rights, immediately screams manipulation, because that's the point. They are trying to twist things into their favor to make sure that you don't feel you have rights. Either that, or even if you do feel like you have rights, you should feel guilty for even wanting to stand up for yourself and your rights as a person, as an individual, as a, a guardian for your children or for whatever else. Your freedoms and your rights should not be respected effectively is what that is entailing what they are effectively saying you should not even res have any self-respect for your own rights and your freedoms because in jehovah's witnesses those rights and those freedoms do not matter and it's more more specifically i would argue that they just it's not that they don't matter so much as that you're not allowed to believe that they even exist they might exist in a political governmental framework but they do not exist under the doctrines of Jehovah's Witnesses because that disallows the governing body and thus Jehovah's Witnesses, the higher ups, to be able to have that power and control over you, your mind, your thoughts, your beliefs, your feelings, and everything else. You are to be a obedient, little, discreet, and faithful slave, aka they really do mean that, but more in the sense of to them. In this case, in the modern context, it's the governing body. They are the ones you are to listen to because they are the ones who are the conduits for Jehovah God and Jesus Christ. You are supposed to listen to them and get all your instruction from them and your information and your understanding from them and not from anybody else. And they're no doubt probably trying to twist and contort it in their, the way they always have, which is always hyping up the idea that everything else is Satan and his demons influenced or controlled or the word or the manipulation of Satan as demons, AKA everything else is bad, except for what we dictate to you and we convey to you and we tell you, and we sell you and we brand and market to you. Anything else is bullshit. This furthers their ability to contort, manipulate those minds of Jehovah's witnesses, of their followers, of their members into their favor to make sure that they have full power and control dynamics over them. So that's the key point that you need to understand when you hear that. When you first hear it, that's why I had the face I did uh, as well, especially when we get into the first portion, which I assume Lloyd's going to touch on here. So I will save that for once we hear the rest of his video here. It would be immodest to do so. So it's not enough for elders to simply remind parents or remind victims of abuse that they have the right to report to the authorities. It's important that elders make themselves a part of the process by reporting themselves. And they can tell parents, look, you can report yourselves, you can file your own report if you want to, but we're going to be filing our own report because we have a duty to protect the flock. We have a duty to protect the congregation. Just let it sink in and think about that. What does that indicate? What does that mean? Well, again, it's more about their power and control over you. They're basically usurping their authority and taking it away from you, saying you can do this, but we'll do it our own too. Basically, it's almost like a form of a thinly veiled threat of like, you should feel like it's hopeless and pointless to file your own because we'll take care of it. But we know from the track record that the Chauvet's Witnesses have, they do not do that. They actually would rather work to cover it up, especially when they know for a fact a member of a congregation is committing CSA, child sex assault, child sex crimes. They almost autopilot to it because again, like Lloyd pointed out, because this is something that you can hear from the governing body themselves all the time. And in reading the doctrine that Jehovah's Witnesses nonstop throughout their history is image. 
the protecting the flock isn't so much actually really doing that as it's protecting the brand and marketing image of the Jehovah's Witnesses as a group, a company, and a course as individuals, aka every single individual member of the Jehovah's Witnesses themselves is technically just a prop for further advertising. That's why they're so hell-bent on this image thing where they restrict what you can wear, how you can speak, how you can think, how you're allowed to talk, how you're, who you're allowed to dress and, and not address, when and where, so on and so forth. Why? Because it's controlling the brand's image. It's all about how it projects, how it looks on the outside. That's really all that matters to them. Nothing else truly does. That's really what they mean when they say protecting the flock when they are going to file their own report. It's a two-pronged attack, basically, to try to further make you less likely to actually file your own police report with this kind of accusation or this kind of issue, uh, whether you actually have the proof and know it happened or not. I did also want to point out the really culty rhetoric from earlier on in the clip so when direction is given by Jehovah's organization, listen, accept it, and apply it. Listen, accept it, and apply it. No questions asked. Do as you're told. Do not think for yourself. Do not question. Just do. Be a robot. Be a modaton. Do as you're instructed. Because you're a robot function like it. Don't question, don't think, just do. That's what that translates to. That's how they show their humility. I would say, isn't it a shame that it's just the rank and file Jehovah's Witnesses who have to show some humility? Imagine if you were building a kingdom hall and you ignored the direction of how to build it because we thought we knew better. You could have a lopsided kingdom hall. I love how this perfectly encapsulates. This is why I had the face I did. I was wearing it when I heard this and ever since after. Because it's the irony of how the latter half of this ended. So what we what Lloyd just addressed and what we just saw in this video, what I was addressing there for too. It's ironic because it's a whole case of look in the fucking mirror, bud. Because exactly that exactly what he just said but now apply a mirror take a mirror and smash it over their fucking faces and they still won't see their own reflection they'll just deny it because you the, the rule of dictatorships and cults is deny 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 always deny everything because unless it's raving about their cult about their dictatorship about themselves Deny, deny, deny. Because it, it, it can only be what they want to hear. It can only be a positive image that they can use for advertising. That's it. It cannot be anything else. This is a case of like, holy shit. Because they're literally, the governing body themselves here, are literally the very ones who are literally being dictators. They are saying you cannot question or think. Don't think for yourself and do not question literally a single word that they tell you. Be a monotonic robot and just do as you are fucking told. Or there will be repercussions. And it's really interesting that they say that when they start out like this. Because that is irony right there. That is exactly what they're doing actively. They're doing that to then use it as a setup to then explain to you why it's, it's okay for them, just not for you. And don't question it. Just accept it. That's ultimately all that translates to, which is why it's laughable to the extent that I kind of had to try to stifle my laughs. And I had these grins and stuff on my face of like, okay, bud, because wow, like they don't even try to disguise it or hide it at all. In the following dramatization, notice how a couple who are studying the Bible with Jehovah's Witnesses, armed with this appreciation that the angels are backing their work, are motivated to begin preaching.
2008 is the last time I had to watch or see anything that's a drama from them. When charity's not enough, ask your doctor if Jehovah's Witnesses is right for you. Already this is Good. So that's the end of lesson 22. Take a look at this week's goal. Think of one person with whom you could share the good news. Think about what to say, how to say it, and when to say it. Hmm. Isn't that technically three goals? <laughs> You'll do great. Let's close with a prayer. Okay. Well, Jocelyn wants me to do this meditation seminar. You guys are into that, right? Well, we were. But I'm like... I can't deal with that right now. With everything happening in the world, inflation is killing my business. I just have bigger problems to think about. But what's bigger than inner peace? Making payroll. Your brother is a Neanderthal. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's not my fault the world's a mess. What do you guys think? So? What did you say? You totally froze. It's a big step to share what you've learned. It's just for us. Our spirituality has always been, you know, personal. We've never liked the idea of pushing our beliefs on others. I know we're not pushing, but... We used to feel the same way. I didn't think I could ever preach. I didn't even like the word preach. How did you get over it? Well, the more we studied, the more we came to realize that when Jesus said, go and make disciples, he was talking to us. It's the work that Jesus gave each one of us personally. Sometimes it feels like it's too much for us. Well, it is too much for just us. But do you remember what Jesus promised next? I am with you. He fucking kill exactly. himself. Exactly. <laughs> and he knew that sometimes it would be hard. But we have some very powerful help. Here's some homework. Take a look at Revelation chapter 14 and verse 6. And I saw another angel flying amid heaven. And he had everlasting good news to declare to those who dwell on the earth. And this is a neat point in the research guide. It says that God's angels do not preach directly to people. I'm so glad Blake got us to do this homework. I didn't realize mid heaven means overhead. Help is so close. Yeah. I'm just this entire time ever since the start I've been wondering when is it that they're gonna remove his fucking ear piercings possibly hers but probably just his that's like contraband they're right there with us <laughs> That was it? That's how it ended? Jesus taught us to pray to beg the master for more harvest workers. If that was true in the first century, how much more true is it now during our time at the end of this harvest period? So what a privilege each of us have to be one of those workers that Jesus taught us to pray for.
And we can accomplish that work with eagerness if we meditate upon the fact that it's our personal responsibility to preach and always remember that lives are at stake, ours and those of the ones we preach to as well. Always remember that lives are at stake, ours and those of the ones that we preach to. So as as we've established before, actually, and their whole 10 year plan to reform themselves into being not called Jehovah's Witnesses anymore, but something completely different um, and being more mainline Christian. This kind of supports that because they're going a little bit, even though it's still Protestants, Protestantism, it's still going more towards typical, more Methodist, Catholic, Baptist level of of reasoning and everything behind, in this case, their preaching work, their proselytization. So proselytizing, that's literally the same thing that Comcast salespeople do going door to door or whatever, or whatever it is that you might be in the world, T-Mobile, I don't know. Um, and it's just like, that's, it's literally solicitation. It's going door to door, harassing people technically relentlessly and being like, Hey, buy our product, buy our product, join us. One of us, one of us, hey, one of us, join us or die. This is basically where it's going. I could totally see them at this point because they keep going further and further that way. I could see them getting severe enough especially as they get more desperate and they start employing admittedly kind of Nazi like cult and dictator, you know, basically manipulative psychology on their members and people of uh, fear mongering and everything else that they could start going down that path that like the hellfire Baptists have always been like, and they're called hellfire Baptists mm -hmm. for damn good reason. It's in the name. It's self-explanatory. They aren't just believing in hellfire. No, they literally will. They're the ones who will just get so livid and start screaming at you that you have to, repent for your sins and not being religious and certainly not believing in the one true faith which every religion and religious sect has ever in history will always and has always and is always claiming that they are the one true interpretation of the bible the one true and one true faith and whatever you get the idea but like you know they're they're with that mentality they take it and they're just like basically screaming at you you're gonna burn in hell for eternity and this that and the other thing do you really want to do this to your family blah, blah, blah. it's like jesus fucking Christ. you know yes you actually make me want to dare to, to bet on myself that i can get there faster because it would at least end my dealing with you <laughs> god i hate proselytization so much i really hate preaching so so fucking much like, just shut up and talk to somebody who actually is willing to tolerate it, at least, if not actually listen, genuinely listen in depth and actually hear you out. Whether they're doing it more so they can question certain things and they can make you question things and they can debate things and try to see your reasoning, or even if you have logic behind it or whatever else, find somebody who's more willing to listen to you than I am, because I'm not tolerating this, you know? And I don't have a positive experience with pioneering um, and the limited amount that I was dragged along with my dad for pioneer work because them, uh, he would go out with like elders and stuff from different halls. At the time, the worst experiences were and the most common uh, that it happened was when the short period for like a couple of years or so that we were at Lake Oswego's congregation. They go around to these different neighborhoods and they, and again, beforehand with pioneering, what you would do is they'd have the little rooms in their kingdom halls and they go in there and they look at the pioneering map. So that, that way, not only does each group of people or pair know uh, what houses and residences and addresses they're going to and thus what neighborhoods are going to and how to navigate to them through them where their territory is for that day um, and also where their congregation's territories are, but also what homes don't have or what homes have a do not call order on that they've given to given forth to the Jehovah's Witnesses in that congregation. Therefore, they're on an official do not call list, or they're supposed to be. And they're always promised, yeah, we'll put you on our do not call list, Jehovah's Witnesses. Well, during that time especially, they never did. And again, this is with like an elder of the hall. I'd be there with my dad being dragged along for the pioneering roots, and they would literally still knock on the doors that were clear do not calls. They would laugh about it and make jokes about how they were do not calls. And like, 
ah, oh, well, what's the worst that could happen? And they go up and they knock on the fucking door and harass them, basically. If they opened it, they'd still try to forcefully talk to them about it as they're trying to shut the door and they're getting yelled at, telling, I told you, put me on your do not call list or I will call the police if you do not leave. And they slam the door. There's a couple of people who did that because they obviously they've done this enough that it's just getting to a point where it is literally legally harassment. And they they would still say that they laugh and they keep talking as if the person was still there and they didn't shut the door louder probably so that they know they that they could hear them through the door and then eventually they laugh and then they're like oh well and then they literally stuff the fucking pamphlets and the watchtower and at the time awake into the fucking door jam as hard as they could even though that of course makes it worse and it's further harassment and then they they leave after that or they just leave it on the door the door up step if it if they couldn't get it in there they'd still force it in and even the people who didn't answer because again they knew who it was or they weren't home but they were do not calls they'd still force the damn things in there or if they got turned away they could they continue to try to talk to the person even though they told them they're not interested and they needed to attend to something or whatever it was and they wouldn't listen and then they even when they got the door finally shut and they finally let it go they'd still put the stupid pamphlets there and the, everything else that kind of like that's the worst kind of pop proselytization you literally are forcing your religion on somebody else your beliefs on somebody else and it's never ever okay or excusable it is something so infuriating and it's ironic because in the bible literally there's that passage that even jehovah's witnesses like to recite a lot again that's why it's ironic because they don't take their own fucking advice or listen to this piece in the bible only when we're convenient for them which is the whole passage, I can't remember word for word verbatim what it is, but basically where Jesus supposedly said, you, you will get more followers, or you get, you'll get, uh, you'll have better reception, you'll be better received by people if you use milk and honey rather than uh, vinegar, basically. And it's because it's factually correct. Like, in other words, it's about your attitude and the way that you address people it's it's literally just mutual respect is what that's referencing it's not difficult for anybody to figure out what the hell that's talking about it's literally just mutual respect respecting boundaries basically being like if somebody sets a boundary and says i don't want to talk to you and i'm not interested in this do not talk to me please stop you literally respect that you don't continue to fucking force your stupid beliefs on that person and apparently they missed the fucking memo on that and the damn bus and then got ran over by it and they still are like laughing, being like, well, who, you want to watch that? So fucking stupid, dude. I, I hate it. But what a cringeworthy series, and again, entirely lacking in self awareness. What's the message you're getting if you've never been a witness? I think it's really interesting to examine the portrayal of worldly people versus Jehovah's Witnesses. Aiden is portrayed as having piercings and these piercings as we're going to see magically vanish when he becomes a witness told you I was I was waiting for that I was waiting for it. as soon as I saw it I'm like that's going to be one of their exemplifications of a good Jehovah's Witness is they go away. your your love for yoga and meditation and and uh, Reiki and shit just all of a sudden dies. Your interest in crystals goes away because that's war. That's satanic. It's it's Satan as demons playing with your mind, you know, colonizing it. It's poisoning your spirituality because you're not you're a bad, evil, worldly person. How dare you find inner peace and think for yourself and believe in something that isn't this stupid, hardline, fundamentalist doctrine? I mean, just how how could you do such a thing? You poor soul. Remember, your life is at stake. You're going to die if you don't <laughs> die and just die a normal death and not have everlasting life on Earth and be able to cuddle with vegan cheetahs. And everybody's going to be a 30-year-old because apparently that's the prime of your life and it's the only age that everyone's going to be because, again, prime of their life. Unless, I guess, apparently you were younger than that and you were, like, say, a child. Then they'll, they'll be still children, supposedly, at least last last they were saying in paradise because you know uh they're they're children they haven't lived that long therefore they they come back at that age but anyone that's like 30 above 30 or above or i guess above 30 years of age it just suddenly becomes 30 year old or like 26 years old or something in the prime of your life uh, yeah. 
Ellie is shown when she encounters the witnesses at the carts with a yoga mat, or when she walks past the witnesses at the cart. They're both shown doing volunteer work, so apparently volunteer work isn't something you should really be doing. And if you think about it, isn't that in line, perfectly on message, when it comes to Jehovah's Witnesses and the way they put all of their emphasis on the preaching work, the life or death preaching work? How can you have time for volunteer work to save doomed worldly people when you should be out warning them? And even meditation we saw there is something that's frowned upon. Of course, Jehovah's Witnesses do do something that they call meditation, but it has nothing to do with breathing exercises and finding inner peace. That that was that was a huge piece there, that as soon as I heard them say meditate on this, while they're clearly depicting it as a worldly negative influence. So again, so you know, those demons are behind it. It's like, okay, so you're literally, you can just see the corporate ooze in the governing body because they're, they're, they're actively trying to condemn that, show it as a, as a worldly negative. While, and then immediately thereafter, or I guess prior to it, saying meditate on. Because you can, automatically you can detect at that point, they don't actually mean meditate because it's not real meditation. No. It's called a hijacking for that reason, because they're hijacking the terminology. And this is a form of the manipulation too, for the people who are potentially interested in, in studying with or listening to and taking in the, the watchtowers and the, the Bible readings, whatever with J-dubs, you know, this is for them specifically aimed at them to try to manipulate their minds into thinking that manipulation or that, that meditation is bad. This one is good. This is the, correct form of meditation basically aka do as you're told think as you're told and do not think for yourself as we've already established everything does root back to that because again it's about their control over you your life and your mind that's all they really care about and that's actually your choices too as a as a direct result and obviously they're targeting younger people that is very clear because again this drama, just even this clip of it, proves that point. It's it's literally targeted at younger people, probably people who are no older than 35 years of age and under, clearly, that they're trying to market themselves to, to try to get their hooks into you and your head, so that you will become a good little obedient member of Jehovah's Witnesses. That's what they're doing. They know what they're doing, because it's corporate that firm they hired for some of the lawsuits, the crisis firm, is probably actually also aided them in their rebrand and in this flight, uh, their productions, and the way that they carry themselves and speak and the things that they depict in it, because they're probably trying to say, you need to get, try to get the younger p generations of people, because the only real main membership of Jehovah's Witnesses these days are like 50 plus year old people. It is not the younger generation, because of course, if you look around the entire world, who are the generations that are the ones who are by far the least religious? Not only the least likely to go to church services, so religious services, or attend them, or do even read the Bible, but let alone actually genuinely have no religion at all, and not desire religion. Whether they're just simply agnostic, they're atheists, they're agnostic atheists, maybe they're one of the esoteric religions and groups, uh, Wiccan or whatever else, like, you can be literally any of this stuff, or again, like I said, completely irreligious whatsoever. It's obviously targeted at us because that is our age demographic. I'm going to 31 next January. So like I'm, I'm closing in on 31 years of age. I am well within their crosshairs right now. in this advertising campaign, they are trying to advertise and target us. Clearly we are their target demographic for advertising and trying to get us to believe and become and study with them and eventually become their, one of their members of that, their cult, their religion, because they're hemorrhaging membership, despite what they're claiming, because they claim they grew by a million people this last year, which anyone who's paid attention knows that's complete fucking fabrication, total lie not even closer to it. it's the opposite they've been hemorrhaging people 
in memberships, especially with all the lawsuits that they keep losing on the national scale. The fact of the matter is they need us because the most common age group of the earth on the earth right now is actually millennials. Hi. The the nineties kids basically. We are we are the majority of people who currently are uh we, we're the biggest what do you call it? The biggest, most uh populous generation of people on this earth right now. And we are also some of the least likely to be religious and the most likely therefore to be atheist, not just agnostic. And so they, they, not just Jehovah's Witnesses, but any other religion, if they want to market themselves more corporately to try to advertise, like they're clearly doing corporate outreach to try to market and advertise globally to a demographic. So again, very, very business oriented. You kind of have to go into a business mode in order to do that. And then when you do that, you have to try to relate to those people or get them to relate to you so that that way they're more inclined to listen at least and give it a chance. That's how they give themselves the opportunity to be able to add membership. The likelihood is that they'll succeed. I guarantee is next to nil, especially more cult like religions like Jehovah's witnesses. But that the point is that is clearly their intentions here. We are their target demographic target demographic, uh, especially if you're between probably eight and like I said, 35, you are dominant play set of people. They're looking to try to manipulate into a believer of their cult. So really, really useful. I think to compare the Jehovah's witness portrayal of worldly people and just see exactly what it is that you're supposed to get rid of if you are into any of these things such as yoga or volunteering you'll also have seen there ellie and aiden have a problem with pushing their beliefs quite rightly i think we can all relate to that it's just not something you should really be doing in polite conversation oh i have these personal religious beliefs you should have them too Again, it makes sense in the context of a group or else you'll fucking die where they believe lives are at stake. But for everybody that doesn't have this doomsday mindset, this mindset of everyone who's not in my religion is going to die. It's just not polite, is it, to push beliefs? So I find myself relating more or way more to these characters before they become, quite frankly, cult drones. Yep. I find it funny, and this is just a personal observation, Ellie is shown, and you'll see this in each of the installments of this series, Ellie is shown sketching almost everything that she's learning. <laughs> Every time there's some lesson, some profound Bible truth, so that's what rather than doing. simply writing it down, she gets a sketchbook out and she draws it. I find that quite funny and a little bit patronizing, almost suggesting that women are at an intellectual level where they can only draw, they can't write things. Maybe it's just me, maybe I'm being hypercritical, but that's kind yeah, of the I message I got excessive. from that. Again, Lloyd was pointing out charity work. It's really bizarre to target that very clearly. That's their aim here. It's a target that is a worldly influence, aka it's influenced by Satan as demons. It's a bad thing. It's not okay. A uh, good little JW would not do volunteerism, which is super ironic, especially considering throughout almost any, if not literally any edition of the Bible, even the Old Testament was especially more so emphasizes is the whole word of Jesus Christ. One of his biggest things was literally that, like, go out and help the less fortunate. Go out and, you know, feed them. Whether that's a soup kitchen, you know, modern day would be like a soup kitchen or it'd be, uh, again, like a food bank, food pantries, but they're still basically like food bank related, um, where you can get food. I literally went to one yesterday because you should never have, be too prideful to know when you need that kind of aid, help, charity, whatever, to be able to actually, you know, 
get by and actually have meals and have food and have sustenance to help your health and help you get by, right? Again, this is if Jesus existed, because I personally don't believe he did, at least not in the capacity that religious groups claim he did. But to me, if he did exist, he was just some random guy who happened to be really good with wood. Hashtag whip it out for Jesus. Um, <laughs> whatever your volunteer work is, as long as you're doing it, you're literally doing technically the work of Jesus Christ, exactly what he did and what he would have, what he was always saying, and that's just reflected in the Bible, is like the most single most important thing to do. And yet, apparently, it's a bad, negative, worldly, Satan, satanically oriented thing. Like, it's influenced by Satan's demons. That's what it means to be worldly. It's influenced by Satan's demons. It's toxic to your spirituality. It poisons you. So, it you know, leaves you open and susceptible to Satan's demons' influences. This is how Jehovah's Witnesses speak. This is how they work. This is their doctrine. This is literally repeated. It's so repetitious and ingrained throughout their entire history. It's all about the manipulation and control using and predating on our minds, on our emotions to keep us under control. So yeah, bashing charity work is just really fucking weird to, to focus on it in that way. And the only way, reason why I can possibly think of why the governing body and thus Jehovah's Witnesses apparently seem to have some sort of a thing against and or a vendetta against charity work, volunteerism is because, again, it forces you to A, interact with worldly people in the worldly world, but B, and I think this is actually the dominant reason, is because, again, think about all the competing faiths, the competing religions and groups, the Catholics and the, and the, the non-denominational groups like Church of Dog and, uh, you know, Unitarians and whatever else. They have consistently almost anywhere you go like you think about you know food pantries food banks meals well where are they almost always held near exclusively churches non-jehovah's witness churches never a kingdom hall about the only reason and i think that's why the the reasons i guess why i can assume and and, and guess as to why the governing body and thus the jehovah's witnesses have something weird against charity and thus again volunteer work that's the only thing you can think of is, is as to why, and that's the latter one is exactly why I think, like the most dominant reason that is, why. They would have some weird thing where now with their indoctrination and their, their dramas and everything, they depict it as worldly and a negative, potentially satanic influence. But it contradicts everything that Hey Suisse stood for and wanted and is just riddled throughout all editions and types and, and interpretations of the Bible. And it's it's just wild to me that they're doing that. And again, I think it's just it's a perfect way that shows it's their reflection. This reflects their doctrine. This reflects their true mentality and what the reasoning would truly be, which again is power, manipulation, and control or power and control via manipulation. Yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments below if you feel so inclined. And again, it only takes but a second to click the like or dislike button. And I'd highly encourage you to do so because it's very appreciative. Or that is, I highly appreciate it. The button appreciates No, the, the button appreciates it no, more. That was great syntax. Uh, you get the idea. It, it's, I greatly, greatly appreciate it. It's incredibly helpful, more than you know when you leave a like, and also when you leave a comment. And if you really are feeling good about it, you could leave a super thanks. That's what this that button looks like. You could, you could click the thanks button. It's a one-time little monetary donation you can toss my way. It's tossing a coin to your witcher, so to speak. Uh, you could do that, or again, you can share the video. All these things are, as I said, incredibly, incredibly helpful. It feeds the algorithm because it proves that you and many other people enjoyed it and or liked it or got value out of it. And therefore, inevitably, other people will too. It's just very helpful things. You don't have to. Again, it's just something that would be helpful and I would be greatly appreciative for those that do do so. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to shut the fuck up now and go get hit by a truck. Seems to be a theme lately. Interesting. Well, they don't call me the Mac Daddy for nothing. <laughs> 
Now, see, this is why I have to go kill myself. So I know one loves me. Bye.